The Grand Lecture Hall at the prestigious Ravenwood University was filled with students, scholars, and the kind of academic elites who considered themselves superior to anyone outside their circle. The room buzzed with whispered conversations as the faculty prepared for the final presentation of the day. The walls of the hall, lined with portraits of past professors and Nobel laureates, bore witness to decades of academic excellence, but also exclusivity. At the front of the hall stood Professor Caldwell, the head of the mathematics department, a man known for his sharp wit and ruthless teaching style. He had a habit of singling out students he believed were unworthy of his classroom, making an example of them in front of their peers. His lectures were less about learning and more about survival for those who dared to take his classes. Students feared him, but they also knew that passing his course with distinction could open doors to the most prestigious graduate programs and research opportunities. Today, his attention had turned to Elijah Brooks, a quiet but brilliant young black student who had just transferred into the university on a full scholarship. Elijah had been admitted due to his extraordinary talent in mathematics, but in an institution where legacy admissions and old money ruled, some professors and students saw him as an outsider, an anomaly who didn't belong. Elijah was different from the others in many ways. He didn't come from a wealthy family, nor did he boast about his abilities. While many students at Ravenwood were the children of CEOs, senators, and billionaires, Elijah had grown up in a modest neighborhood, raised by a single mother who had worked tirelessly to ensure he had the best education possible. He had spent his childhood solving advanced mathematical problems instead of playing video games, immersing himself in the works of Euler, Ramanujan, and Gauss. Numbers were his second language. Yet, despite his brilliance, he had remained humble. He sat quietly at the back of the lecture hall, taking meticulous notes, never raising his hand unnecessarily. But Caldwell had noticed him. And in Caldwell's world, students like Elijah had to prove themselves in ways that others did not. Mr. Brooks, Caldwell called, his voice laced with condescension. Why don't you come up here and solve this problem for us? The equation on the board was monstrous, a twisted labyrinth of symbols and numbers that sent nervous glances through the room. Even some of the brightest students had struggled with similar problems. Caldwell knew this. He had deliberately chosen one of the most difficult problems from an advanced theoretical mathematics text, one that even some of his graduate students had failed to solve. Elijah hesitated for a moment, not out of fear, but out of calculation. He knew exactly what was happening. This wasn't a test of knowledge. It was a test of endurance. It was a challenge disguised as humiliation. A few students chuckled under their breath, leaning toward one another and whispering, as if expecting to watch him fail. But Elijah wasn't just any student. He had spent years competing in international math olympiads, solving problems that made grown mathematicians pause. He had taught himself advanced calculus by the time he was 14 and had been developing his own theorems before he had even set foot at Ravenwood. The problem on the board wasn't a challenge. It was an invitation. Without hesitation, he picked up the chalk and began writing. The room fell silent. Lines of elegant calculations flowed from his mind onto the board. Each step executed with precision and clarity. The same problem that had stumped advanced graduate students unraveled effortlessly under his hand. Professors who had been seated in the back began leaning forward, their skeptical expressions shifting to disbelief. Professor Caldwell's smirk slowly faded. He blinked as he realized what was happening. Elijah wasn't just solving the problem. He was solving it in a way that was more efficient, more elegant than anything Caldwell himself had considered. A few of the students who had initially been snickering now looked at one another in shock. This wasn't just competence. This was mastery. Minutes passed, and then, with one final stroke of chalk, Elijah turned back to face the stunned crowd. He had not only solved the problem, but he had also rewritten a portion of it in a way that made the solution more concise and accessible. Done, he said simply. A murmur rippled through the audience, then an eruption of applause. Students who had laughed at him moments before were now whispering in awe. A few even scrambled to copy down his solution, realizing it was a masterpiece of mathematical thought. Caldwell swallowed hard, clearing his throat. Well, he began struggling to regain control of the situation. That was impressive. But before he could finish, another professor, Dr. Patel, one of the few who had always believed in fostering raw talent, stood up and clapped loudly. Not just impressive, Caldwell. That was brilliant. Other professors nodded in agreement, their egos momentarily forgotten in the face of undeniable genius. Elijah simply smiled, nodded politely, and returned to his seat. He had nothing to prove to them. He had known his own worth all along. As the lecture ended and students began filing out, one whispered to another, Did you see that? Caldwell got shut down in his own game. Another added, Elijah isn't just smart. He's on a whole different level. Word spread quickly across the campus. 
Within hours, Elijah Brooks was no longer just a scholarship student. He was a legend. Other students began approaching him for help, asking for insights, seeking to learn from someone whose brilliance had left even the faculty in awe. And so, the student they had tried to humiliate became the most respected mind in the room. Not because he had sought approval, but because his genius had made it impossible to deny. 